This is part 70 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what a transaction is, the problems that might arise when transactions are run concurrently, and the different transaction isolation levels provided by SQL Server to address concurrency side effects. First, let's understand what a transaction is. A transaction is a group of commands that change the data stored in a database. A transaction is treated as a single unit of work. A transaction ensures that either all of the commands succeed or none of them. If one of the commands in the transaction fails, all of the commands fail, and any data that was modified in the database is rolled back. In this way, transactions maintain the integrity of data in a database. Let's understand what a transaction is with an example. We have an example of transaction here. So this transaction ensures that both the update statements succeed or both of them fail if there is a problem with any one of the update statements. So at the moment here we have got the accounts table. In the account we have got, I mean in the table we have got two accounts, Mark and Mary. Both of them have $1,000 balance. Now what we want to do is transfer $100 from Mark to Mary account. So we have two update statements here. The first update statement is going to detect $100 from Mark account. Look at the ID, it's one, that is Mark's ID. And the second update statement is going to add that $100 to Mary's account. Now both of these update statements are present within this begin transaction and commit transaction block. And those statements are wrapped inside this try block. And we have a corresponding catch block as well. Now, if both of these update statements execute successfully, then commit transaction statement will be executed. At that point, whatever changes these two update statements made, they are made permanent in the database. Imagine this. The first update statement executes successfully, but when it tries to execute the second update statement, there's a problem and it fails. When it fails, the control goes to the catch block immediately and within catch block, we are rolling the transaction back. And when it rolls the transaction back, what's going to happen? It's going to undo any changes that the first update statement has done. So this way, transactions maintain the integrity of our database. I have this same example already typed here. So at the moment, both Mark and Mary has got $1,000 balance. Now let's transfer $100. So when we execute this, and if both of the update statements succeed, then the transaction will be committed. Look at that, transaction committed. At this point, if we check the balances, Mark should have 900 and Mary should have 1100. Now let's introduce a deliberate error. So I'm going to set the ID value to an NVAR CAR value. Now ID column is an integer column. So when it tries to execute this update statement, it will try to convert that value to an integer. It fails. When it fails, the control goes to the catch block and this is going to roll the transaction back. Now look at the balances, mark 900, Mary 1100. Let's execute the script and look at that. It says transaction rolled back and before that it says one row affected. So when it executed this update statement, it didn't have any problem. So it detected $100 from Mark's account. So the balance became 800. And then when it tried to execute this statement, there's a problem. So it went to this catch block, it rolled the transaction back. So what did it do for the change that the first update statement has done? It has undone that. So it has reverted the balance back to 900. Okay, that way this transaction here is ensuring that it's not half done. Either all the statements succeed or none of them. This way transactions are maintaining integrity of our databases. All right, we know that databases are powerful systems and are potentially used by many users or applications at the same time. This means there are concurrent transactions running all the time on a database. Now, allowing concurrent transactions is essential for performance, but keep in mind, they may introduce concurrency issues when two or more transactions are working with the same data at the same time. And here we have some of the common concurrency problems, dirty reads, lost updates, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads. We'll discuss these concurrency problems in detail with examples in our upcoming videos. Now, one way to solve all these concurrency problems is by allowing only one user to execute only one transaction at any point in time. Now, imagine what could happen with this kind of an approach. 
If you have a large database with several users who want to execute several transactions, all those transactions get queued and they may have to wait a long time before they could get a chance to execute their transactions. So you are getting poor performance and the whole purpose of having a powerful database system is defeated if you serialize access this way. At this point, we might be thinking, well, then for best performance, why don't we allow all transactions to execute concurrent concurrently? The problem with this approach is that it may cause all sorts of concurrency problems. That is, dirty reads, lost updates, non-repeatable reads, phantom reads, if two or more transactions work with the same data at the same time. So to balance that, SQL Server provides different transaction isolation levels. So if we want to balance concurrency problems versus performance depending on our application needs. And for that, SQL Server provides all these transaction isolation levels. Read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, snapshot, serializable. The isolation level that you choose for your transaction defines the degree to which one transaction must be isolated from resources or data modifications made by other transactions. Depending on the isolation level you have chosen, you get varying degrees of performance and concurrency problems. The table right here has the list of um, isolation levels along with concurrency side effects. So on the left we have the isolation levels and here we have the concurrency problems. Now if you look at read uncommitted, it has all concurrency side effects, whereas serializable, it has no concurrency side effects. So if you choose the lowest isolation level, that is read uncommitted, it increases the number of concurrent transactions that can be executed at the same time, but the downside is you have all sorts of concurrency issues. On the other hand, if you choose the highest isolation level that is serializable, you will have no concurrency side effects, but the downside is that this will reduce the number of concurrent transactions that can be executed at the same time if those transactions work with the same data. So in our upcoming videos, we will discuss the concurrency problems and transaction isolation levels in detail with examples. Thank you for listening and have a great day.